Hey, what's up guys? This is Prefix Wiz here coming at you with another Unity tutorial. In the continuing series of Unity GUI, today we're going to be talking about the button. Counting double digit thousands. And we are talking about the GUI button. Let's go ahead and open Unity. And let's go ahead and right click up in the hierarchy, UI. And we're going to go ahead and create a button. And I'm just going to go ahead and resize this button so that we can easily see it. Okay. So Unity automatically puts a canvas in the scene with the button as a child of the canvas. As a default, the button comes with a text. And let's go ahead and take a look at the button. Of course, the button has basic components. The rect transform, which specifically deals with 2D layouts. It has an image. So it needs an image source in order to display. And it comes with a button script. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth. The rec transform, the canvas render, and the image will be talked about in more detail in other tutorials. But for now, we're talking specifically about the button. Okay, and under the button component, you have the on-click events. And of course, you have the default UI material. And you can change that as needed. And of course, you can add components down here at the bottom. Or you can just drag and drop components directly onto the object in the inspector. So let's see how we can manipulate the button to do what we want it to do. First, we're going to get into the coding. I just want to go ahead and knock that out real quick because obviously we can do almost anything with code. So let's go down here to the asset folder and create a C sharp script. And we'll call this test button. And let's go ahead and double click and open it in model develop. Okay, once we're in Mono Develop, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of all of this cool stuff. And all we're going to do is add one public variable, and it's going to be a game object, and we'll call this the other canvas. And then we'll go down here and create a public function. Make sure it's public. And we'll call this when I click this button. When I click this button, I want to open the game object called the other canvas. So we're just going to keep this simple. Now all we're going to do is take this other canvas and set its state to active. And we'll set it active by telling it it's going to be true. So hit save. So I went ahead and created another canvas. And now what I'm going to do is make sure it's deactivated. It's active and now it's inactive. I'm going to click on the button and I'm going to take this canvas object and place it right here where we said in the public variable, the other canvas. So now this button has a reference to which game object is the other canvas. And now what we're going to do is hit the plus sign here and on click for on click events. And we're going to say when we click ourselves, it's going to ask you for a function. All you got to do is come down here to the drop down menu and find that public because it's looking through all of its components. And right now we have a script on it called test button. And inside test button, we're going to find a public function called when I click this button. So let's go ahead and select that. So now, if we were to push play in Unity right now, and we were to come down here to the game view and click this button, the other canvas will open. So that's how you use basic functions when it comes to coding with the button. So now that we have the basic scripting portion with the button out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the actual component within the button. So obviously we have a button that we can set to active or inactive, the actual button script itself. And then we have what we call interactable. If it's not interactable and we start the scene, this button will not be able to be clicked. If we have it interactable, it can be clicked. And then we have transitions. We have none, color tint, sprite swap, and animation. Obviously, if you choose none, nothing will happen when you click this button other than the actual prescribed function. If you hit color tint, all of these components become operational. You have the target graphic, which is obviously itself the button. Then you have the color of the object as it is. So if I come down here to normal color, I can change the color of the button to my liking. When it's highlighted, meaning when I hover over it with my mouse, I want to change it to a different color. So let's say I want that color to be purple. So when I hit play, I highlight it and it becomes purple. When I leave the collision area, it will return to its normal color of white. And we have the pressed color. There's the normal, highlighted and then when I press the button on top of it when I'm in the collision area it will change to this color of my liking and let's make it green so I hit play and now it changes to purple when I highlight it and it changes to green when I press the button 
Okay, moving down to disabled color. When the button can no longer be interacted with, this is the color that it's set to. As a default, if I were to take the interactable and uncheck it, it defaults to this color with this opacity. So let's say I want to turn it red and I want to bring up the opacity. And if I uncheck interactable at this time, it will change to that red disabled color. And we have the color multiplier. And now the fade duration in seconds is how long it takes to fade to the specific colors that we specified earlier after the event has happened. So let's change fade to one for one second and let's hit play. Now it should take one second to fully become purple when we highlight it and fully become white when we unhighlight it. Okay, then we jump down here to navigation. It says automatic at the moment. You have none, horizontal, vertical, automatic, and explicit. So for none, obviously, there is no navigation that is preset, meaning the user has to actually find and manually push that button. If you have it on horizontal, this is telling your native device that if it has arrow keys or a tab key or any kind of key that it uses to, to navigate buttons on a page, it's going to navigate from left to right in a horizontal manner. If you were to do vertical, it will go through these buttons in a vertical manner. And if you were to do the automatic version, it will automatically do it based on however your system is set up, if there is one set up. And then of course we have explicit where you can tell it exactly which keys or functions or buttons we're going to use in order to navigate through the menu. Okay, so let's hop back up here. Now Sprite Swap is the same concept as color tint, but instead of changing the color, we are actually changing the image associated with the button. So let's see if we can find a couple of images and change those around. So now, if I were to push play, when I highlight it, we should get a check mark, which we do. And when I press it, we should get a knob, which we do. And when I disable it, it should be mostly transparent. And it is. And then we have animations. And when we use animations, like the image swap, it uses animations to transition between button states. Which brings us back to the on-click events. So let's go back over here to the on-click events. And what we're going to do is we're going to make all of these buttons do something. We're going to make them open something, close something, change something without the use of our own C-sharp scripts. Remember, with no scripts, we are able to click this button and this button turns on. This button says, I'm going to turn on the other white button. Click it, and the other white button turns on. When I'm clicked, I'm going to face the blue button and turn on the black button. So here you have this button, and here's the blue button it's going to face. Now, you're not going to be able to see it from the 2D view here, but you will be able to see it in the scene view up here. So if you click this button, you'll see that this turned to face this, and the black button appeared. And now this one says, I'm going to turn on the other black button and turn off the white button. So it's going to turn off this button here, and it's going to turn on a black button here. And now this black button says, when I'm clicked, I'm going to open a menu with more buttons and activate a GameCube in the background that's spinning. So you click it, and now you have a cube in the background that's spinning that has nothing to do with the UI. It is an object. And now you have, a, you have several buttons here that do nothing. They're just for show. Okay, then we have this button down here that says, I'm going to turn off everything except the cube, and I'm going to turn on the first canvas button. So, let's click this button, and there we have it. The original button we started with, and a cube in the background that's spinning. So that's how we end up with a menu loop without having to code anything. Okay, so let me go ahead and delete the entire canvas so we can start fresh. Get rid of the cube, and we're going to right-click, UI, button, and we're just going to duplicate this button. So now we're just going to separate the buttons can you, so you can see them. So all we have to do to manipulate these UI buttons is go down here to the on-click events. But we're able to manipulate buttons and menus and panels and UI elements without even having to touch code. And this is a very big plus in the Unity community. So let's take a look at the on-click functions. And now we can choose here when it says on-click. But just think of on-click as when you click me. When you click me, I want something to happen. So whatever goes in this box is what it's going to happen to. So on-click, when you click me, whatever's in this box, something's going to happen to that object. So let's say 
we want to do something to button number two. So we're gonna drop it in there. Now, what's selected? Button number two selected. So we're gonna do something to itself, okay? And what we're gonna do to itself is, let's say we wanna turn it off. That was a simple one, right? So we're gonna go to game object, set active bool. Now, notice the check mark is off. Because the game object is going to be on when we click it, we want to turn it off. So we want this to be unchecked. Unchecked is off, checked is on. And this button, button one, we're going to have it do something to a different object, not itself, but another object. So on click, when you click me, I want to do something to another object. And we're going to do something to another object called button two. So we just drag button two into this area. And we can find a function in here to do whatever we want. Whatever function is in here, whatever public function or built-in function that Unity has, we can make it happen. But for now, we're just going to do set active bool. And set active just means we're going to turn something on or off in the hierarchy or in the scene. So in this case, we're going to turn it on. So let's check it. But wait a minute. We can't just turn it on because it's already on. Absolutely. So let's go up here and... In the inspector, let's go ahead and deactivate the object. And you see it's deactivated now and you cannot see it in the scene. And that's how you deactivate the object. And what we're going to do when we click this button is reactivate it. And what this is going to do is deactivate it. If we were to hit play and we were to click button number one, button number two appears. And if we were to click button number two, remember button number two, we have it pointing to itself saying, turn me off. We click it and it turns off. Button number one turns it on and that's the menu loop. But again, there are so many things you can do with this without having to touch a script. Thanks for watching everyone. I really hope you got a lot of information out of this. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.